Can you feel the power of the Barbarian? Barbarian, a 1987 game by Palace Software, infamous for the advertising and the cover, which featured Maria Whittaker and the future Wolf from Gladiators. Uh, and it was a cover so controversial, W. H. Smith banned it because of Maria Whittaker and uh, allowed just Wolf to appear on the cover in their shop. So they're quite happy with a big oiled up muscly man who's nearly naked, but not a lady who's nearly naked. Anyway, I've got a Sinclair Spectrum copy here. Um, you don't want the home computer club versions either because they do not come with the proper artwork. They just have Wolf and no poster either. I've got the free poster inside. And I must have a word with you guys at this time because something very serious has happened with my poster that I've got of this game. And I want you to own up now. Okay, this is very, very serious. Whoever has drawn a biro phallus on Wolf on the poster I have in my box... Please own up now. Otherwise, there will be repercussions for the whole class. I will make you come in at the end of the day and you'll stay here until you admit who has drawn that on Wolf. Anyway, on to the game. We start off, of course, on the Commodore 64 version, the original. Lovely colourful graphics on the 64. A very good use of the palette. You don't always see this on the 64. There's very rarely... Um, they use the brighter colours, but no Barbarian looks really, really good. And there's some lovely animation. And one of the big moves you can do is a decapitation move, which I've done there. And when you've done that, um, the little demon comes on and kicks the head off the screen. There's lots of nice little animations like that and nice touches. We're out in the wastelands at the moment. Now, the hacked version I've got here gives you two different scenarios at a time. Now we're in the woods... And it will alternate at the first levels between the woods and the wasteland. And basic premise is you're the barbarian. You've got to rescue the princess, Maria Whittaker, from Drax. And not not the Drax in the space station, by the way. I've got to make that clear because he's, he's quite litigious. Um, we mustn't go around saying that Hugo Drax has kidnapped Maria Whittaker. And again, I've done a decapitation move there. Um, it's a very good move, but... As soon as you go on through the levels, the enemies get very wise to it. And because it takes a few seconds to uh, execute, uh, you lay yourself open to blows when you're doing it. So you've got to have a good clear run at it. So cycle back to the wasteland here. And there is a two-player mode as well. There's one player at the bottom and your player one. I'm on the left there. There's lots of really nice moves, but it, it has the usual fighting game problem. This is one of the later screens. Um with Drax sitting on his throne and Princess Maria Whittaker sitting there in her bikini, as she would be. Um, looking a bit uh, Star Wars-y, of course. Um, and what you're trying to do is basically beat the enemy, and each of you has six dots. You have six dots on the top left of the screen. He has six dots on the top right of the screen, and half a dot. Uh, it removes half a dot every time you land a blow successfully. And by the way, now I'm on a cheat mode, so any blows he lands on me um, will not register. The fighting as well, you've got to learn how to defend as well as attack. And um, we're over to the Sinclair Spectrum version. Option for demo or one player game. Not sure, there's, not sure if there's a two player game on the Spectrum, I'm not sure. And on this Spectrum version I have here, I appear to start off in the throne room. It might be because it's a 48k game. And therefore, there's less screens. I've noticed this on the BBC version as well. You don't have all the screens. You just start off in the throne room. Very nice detailed graphics on the specy. They avoid colour clash by keeping the foreground just those two colours. Of course, the animation isn't quite as good as the Commodore 64, but it still works out pretty well. And again, there's a nice use of colour because it keeps these areas very... Well, it keeps keeps them apart, basically, so you're not going to get colour clash, but it's, there's still plenty of colour on the screen. Oh, you do get a little red effect when you land a blow as well. But again, it's done in such a way there's no colour clash there at all. It's not a big block lighting up. It seems to be done very cleverly with an eight. Oh, there's a very slight overlap issue on the doorway there. 
over the BBC Micro version, and Wolf looks very evil. He has very evil eyes in the loading screen there. And this isn't programmed by Palace. It was done, converted by a guy called Dylan for Superior Software, who then released it in about 89. Very nice here on the BBC. You can redefine the keys. A BBC game where you can actually use sensible keyboard controls. You don't have your fingers everywhere. You can just have QAO and P, and it works really well. It'll be interesting to see how they get down to 32K on the BBC. And the same uh, things they've done on the Spectrum version, uh, missing out the wastelands and just starting off in the throne room. So you've got the two screens, the throne room and the kind of death pit fighting area. Colour slightly garish, but it plays really, really well, actually. Um, no, it doesn't have the flow of even the Spectrum version, but um, already this is probably one of my favourite fighting games on the BBC Micro. And the fact it's got two-player mode as well, so you can have fun like that if you've got a friend. Drax looks slightly odd there um, in the background. Again, it's slightly limited by the colours the BBC Micro has, so you've got this weird magenta and a lot of red here as well. Sound effects limited to hits and bangs and things. Here we are in the Death Pit area and the Princess Maria, Marina, whatever it is in the game. I was just, everyone just thinks of it as Wolf and Maria Whitaker, don't they, really? And it's just... One of the tricks is to keep on rolling at your opponent and roll him into the corner as well. And then land, land him in the corner and land some blows. Over to the CPC. And yes, you may have thought this was a 16-bit version from these lovely colours. This is the Amstrad. Um, if you thought the C64 version got the best out of the palette, look at that sunset in the background. It is gorgeous. Um, I'm playing a disc version, so I'm assuming perhaps the tape version may have less screens in it. And one of the things, I don't, I don't know if I've noticed this on the C64 version, but on the Amstrad version, you actually get some black opponents as well. And I'm thinking that's probably the first time I'd seen that in a video game. It's really nice to see. Everyone's always Caucasian in, in video games, unless they're on a Spectrum or a um, BBC Micro. Um, where the colours can get a bit garish, but it's nice to see that. And the decapitation move isn't quite as well animated on the CPC, but again, look at that background. Those colours, the depth in there. Looks really nice. Very basic music and sound effects again, but I just love how these graphics look on the CPC. Someone's done a really good job on this. It's not really a game you often hear lauded in terms of the graphics. But it looks really good on the CPC. Now, I don't usually cover unofficial conversions on Chinivision during the main reviews anyway. Um, but I thought I'd give a quick mention to this Atari unofficial version, Atari 8-bit unofficial version of Barbarian. Because it's so fast and smooth. I'm not going to review it in detail or include it in the summary, but do check it out. Because it's so fast and so smooth and it plays well. Over to the PC version, and this is running on my 386 laptop. It's a hacked version of the game that seems to run at a normal AT uh, PC speed. CGA only, certainly on the version I've got here, and it is called Death Sword on the PC. In some foreign markets, the game was called Death Sword, as opposed to Barbarian. Game asks you if you have a joystick. I do not, so I'll be playing this on keyboard. And the keyboard controls on the PC seem to be quite fiddly. Um, you hold down one set of buttons to move around, and then you hold down shift to move the sword as well. Despite all that extra power the PC has, it doesn't even seem to be as smooth as the 8-bit version, despite running in the four-color mode here in CGA. Sound effects of PC Beeper, um, and I'm finding this very fiddly and annoying to play. It's, Barbarian isn't the best game to play on the keyboard by any means. It really does need a joystick. 
and the graphics aren't particularly attractive. Although that said, if you have a PC at the time, especially one of the lower spec Amstrad models, there's not much else to choose from, so perhaps you'd put up with this. Over to the ST. And you see how close the CPC graphics are to the 16-bit versions here. Um, yes, the ST's got lots more colours to choose from, but they still only got 16 colours on screen each. Um, just the ST version is, of course, higher resolution. The ST standard resolution is the same as the Amstrad's 4 colour mode. So you're looking at basically twice the resolution here on the ST. And amazing, on the ST versions, they've got that nice gradiated background as well as you do on the Amstrad. They, it lacks that depth. Um, I don't like these backgrounds quite as much as the Amstrad version. That's not me. I don't know. Perhaps that's just me. Plays really well on the ST. And there's lovely sampled sound effects using the DMA sound on the ST. And I'm running in demonstration mode at the moment just so you can see the throne room screen because I couldn't get that far. And I didn't have a workable cheat for the... Amiga or ST versions, so I've got to use the demo modes to show you. All the moves are identical on all the versions, by the way. Um, the differences are purely graphical and sound. And, uh, animation as well, but I guess that comes into graphics. And over to the Amiga. Slightly crushed up screen. And I managed to decapitate him in one go. And you know what? The little goblin doesn't walk across the screen as smoothly as he does on the C64 version. And again, they're big. why can't there be a few more colours in this background on the Amiga version? Someone's really got to tell on the Amstrad version, and the Amiga version just looks a bit flat, despite the fact it's got 32 colours to play with um, on screen at once in this screen mode. You'll notice I'm not talking too much about the gameplay at this stage, because it's really identical between all the versions. Barbarian manages to be incredibly consistent between the versions. It all comes down to animation and just how fast the game is. And the Amiga also has lovely sampled sound as well. A bit better than the ST, but then you'd expect that with the uh, high quality sound chip. Barbarian is quite a remarkable game for all sorts of reasons. Firstly, it used very clever marketing um, using Maria Whittaker and just a guy who looked like a bodybuilder at the time who later became Wolf from Gladiators for some really compelling and talked about advertising. This game got so much column inches at the time just from that artwork. Let's push that to one side because we're going to talk about the game and Barbarian is a really good game and it's remarkable in the sense it's so consistent between the versions. Every version has really good graphics for that system. Okay, I'll give you a few years later the 16-bit systems could have done better. The C64 and Amstrad versions look absolutely lovely. The Amstrad version perhaps edging it out in terms of colours and look, but the C64 edging it out on the animation. The Spectrum Corner Amstrad versions play fantastically well. The PC version, well, it is what it is really. You can't expect too much on a CGA PC from 1987-1988. BBC Micro version plays fantastically. Really good fighter for the BBC, especially as the system not known for that kind of game. Yes, the palette's kind of garish. I always say so about some BBC Micro games. Can't be avoided. But it's really good. And it's got a two-player mode as well. Amiga and ST. Well, graphically, they're very, very similar. Uh, the Amiga has slightly better sound. They both play really well, but oddly enough, don't have the animation of the C64 version. Which, again, slight shame, because they could easily match it and take it far, far beyond what's actually been achieved but again, it was early days for 16-bit games. For my money, the Amstrad CPC and C64 versions lead the pack, but all these versions are incredibly consistent and playable. And whatever format you've got, check it out. And by the way, I still haven't forgotten about that biro phallus drawn on Wolf. You bought shame on yourself, you brought shame on the school.